Hi, my name is Rachel O'Kello and I'm a UK-based solicitor specialising in immigration, nationality and deportation law. And this is the second day of our five-day video series dealing with deportation, where we're going to take a deep dive into the area of deportation law and specifically criminal deportation. So today I wanted to have a look at the mindset that somebody who's um, facing deportation proceedings will need to have in order to put their best case forward if they wish to challenge those deportation proceedings. So specifically, I'm talking about criminal deportation proceedings. So proceedings where you may be facing deportation because you have committed a criminal offence and you have got a prison sentence of more than 12 months. So the first thing you need to come to terms with is that you will be considered not just as a migrant, which has its own stigmas, but as a foreign national criminal. And a foreign national criminal is defined by law. And a foreign national criminal is somebody who has gone to prison, who has had a prison sentence for more than 12 months, who is somebody who has been convicted of a serious offence, or who is somebody who is a persistent and repeat offender. So specifically, um, the uh, first uh, the first um, thing that we would say, being somebody who has gone to prison for more than six, more than twelve months, so who's had a prison sentence for more than twelve months, that's a question of fact. Okay, so um, if you have been convicted and sentenced by the judge of more than twelve for a prison sentence of more than twelve months, then you know that you are going to be called. A foreign national criminal and that's the mindset that you need to have when you're going to challenge your deportation proceedings. If you're somebody who the Home Office has considered has committed a serious offence or is a repeat offender, um, a re repeat offender really is a question of fact because I suppose it would depend on how many offences you're going to commit over what period of time and you could argue the case there, you could argue the case of the offence not being serious enough um, to be considered a serious offence for the purposes of calling you a foreign national criminal. Um, but those are the mindset shifts that you need to have when thinking about yourself and how you're now going to be perceived by the Home Office and by the courts. And the reason being is that Parliament has said that it is in the public interest for foreign national criminals to be deported. And Parliament, as we know, represents the will of the people. So therefore, what effectively the law is saying is that it is the will of the people for foreign national criminals to be deported. So when you are going to now challenge deportation proceedings, you have to come from it of an angle, from an angle of saying, well, the public says I should be deported. Okay? And the deportation laws are all made in a way to effect your deportation, so to make sure that you will be removed from the United Kingdom. The problem being that deportation laws can't be absolute. They can't absolutely require you to be removed from the United Kingdom because you have human rights. Doesn't matter what you've done, we all, being human, by virtue of being human, have human rights. And so the courts and the Home Office and the public have to have regard to the fact that you, even though you're considered a foreign national criminal, has human rights. And your human rights will particularly look at your family life in the United Kingdom, whether you have a qualifying partner, and I've done a video before about qualifying partners, you can go and look at that video on my spouse visa series, what is a qualifying partner? So you have a qualifying partner or a qualifying child. And again, my spouse visa series looked at um, the issue of having a qualifying child. Okay, so it will look at, your human rights will look at you having a qualifying partner or a qualifying child and also um, the length of time that you've been in the United Kingdom. And specifically, I should add, the length of time that you've been in the United Kingdom lawfully. So if you've been in the United Kingdom for the majority of your life, um, then definitely that would place um, a lot of weight on your private life long residence being considered heavily in your favour in deportation proceedings. Some people are born in the United Kingdom, they're not British, because don't forget what we've discussed in day one, is that people who are not British at any time 
can face uh, deportation proceedings. So people could be born in the United Kingdom, but they're not British, they could face deportation proceedings. But clearly, if you're born in the United Kingdom um, and have lived here all your life, then great weight can be placed on you um, being resident here, even if, because sometimes people born here are not even called, um, not even considered to be legally here. So even if you're technically not considered to be legally here, there will still be a lot of weight placed on the fact that you're born here and you've lived here for all of your life, and specifically, particularly if you've lived here for the majority of your life. So those are the things that weigh in your favour, your family life and the length of time that you've lived in the United Kingdom. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to balance the scales. So you're going to have to um, show that... Um, your private life and your family life and your human rights effectively outweigh the public interest in your particular case. So your private life has more weight attached to it than the public interest. The public interest requires you to be deported, okay? You have to balance your private life against this. So you're saying, uh, my private life is so significant and so important that it should outweigh the public interest in, in deporting me and therefore I should not be deported because my private life rights are weightier on the scales than the public interest. And you will have to show in your particular case why that applies in your case. Why is your private life and family life, your human rights, why are they more significant? Why should they be placed, um, why should there be more weight attached to your, your human rights than the public interest? The public needs to be protected from foreign national criminals. Your presence is not conducive to the public good. That's what Parliament says. So why are your human rights more weightier than protecting the public from you? What you're going to look at is whether you are likely to reoffend. That's something that you could say. I have this family life. I have this private life. I'm not going to reoffend. The offence that I did was serious, but it was one off. It's not going to happen again. I've been rehabilitated. I used to be... Um, uh, addicted to drugs, I'm no longer addicted. I'm less likely to reoffend. Re I used to be an alcoholic. I'm no longer re an alcoholic. I'm less likely to reoffend. My private life is more significant than the public interest because I'm not a threat to the public. I'm not going to reoffend. These are the things that you will talk about in your favour. This is the evidence that you're going to need. You can't say it for yourself, of course. You would say it for yourself naturally. You're going to need to get that expert evidence to show why your human rights is stronger than the public interest and therefore why you shouldn't be deported. It's a mindset shift. You can't just go there and say, well, because it's me and I'm, you know, I've got kids and I help them go to school, I take them to school. That's not going to work. It has to be so significant that it outweighs the public interest. OK, so that's what you need to think about when you're going to challenge your deportation case. You can make a list, public interest, my human rights, OK, and seize the other one, OK, and outweighs the other one. OK, so that's it for today. I think that's that's enough to go away with and think about if you're um, affected by deportation proceedings, criminal deportation proceedings, because if there's no criminality, then your um, private life, um, can can outweigh the public interest. Your private life cannot weigh the public interest against deporting you if there's no criminality. It's only where there's criminality that you really need to outweigh the public interest. Okay? Um, so if you want to discuss this um, in your particular circumstances, because this is just general guidance that I'm giving you, then you can call our offices on 01213. 894-895 and book a free case assessment with myself or you can book that case assessment at www.clarityvisas.co.uk. I'll see you tomorrow for day number three. Have a good day, take care, be good and bye-bye.